Azzy. Guess Cass? This is serious. You know Ricky? He's been doing some weird stuff lately and his parents went to the police. Oh no, not Ricky. Yeah, they said that one of the neighbors has tried to kidnap Ricky. Look at him. Who wouldn't want Ricky? He was scared a lot, all the time, and couldn't tell them who it was. Why not? Ricky, you gotta speak up. <laughs> well, he made a little piece of art, a portrait of that person. Look at that. Ha! He's terrified! That's not a human! Yeah, imagine this in your bed at night. The detective said, the man was turned into a monster in his mind because of the fear. Da da da! And yet, it can help them find the criminal. Sharp teeth, pointy ears. I know that guy. <laughs> Here are the suspects. Mrs. Combs, I was in the office that day. I wouldn't do that to poor Ricky. Love him like my own son. I'm Mr. Gray. I was painting the fence. <laughs> That's me. I'm Mr. Banner. I haven't left home this week as I'm sick. All right. Well, Mr. Banner, I'm sorry, but you look like this kidnapper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't mean to, to do you like that, but like those nostrils. Yeah, those nostrils are a tech giveaway. <laughs> Azzy, we were wrong. Green paint. What? Oh! Mr. Gray cleaned his face and hands and was covered in green paint. Missed the spot on the trousers. Wait, so this guy covered himself in paint and he would sneak in and be like, Bleh! made his ears pointy? Yeah, made his ears nice and pointy. That's a scary, scary. Kidnapper, I must say. Bill went to the market in his old cloak. Oh, he's so cute! He's a cutie in his old cloak. I like wearing my old cloaks too. He met a gypsy that was selling a jacket. Ooh, look how sparkly. Yeah, so nuts. He took the money out of his pockets. Oh, uh, let's see how much I have here, uh, two dollars? And counted it in front of her and put it back. What, why? Then he asked the gypsy to hold his cloak while he was trying the jacket on. Is it an invisibility cloak? <laughs> Maybe it is. Kind of looks like Harry Potter. But she ran away with it. Oh, she's a bad. <gasps> oh, bad girl. Nevertheless, he wasn't upset. He got the jacket and didn't lose the money. How is that possible? Because the jacket's worth more money than the cloak? I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, he was wearing his old cloak. Maybe what he did is he counted the money, put it in his pocket, and then when he took the jacket off, he like very sneakily put his money in his pocket. Yeah, maybe, maybe. There were holes in his cloak pockets. Ah, oh, you're tricky. You're a little trickster too. So we took the money out of his pants. You know, sometimes when we live in a crazy world, you gotta do some crazy stuff yourself. Get yourself a new jacket. John woke up locked in a lab. It's not how you want to go. Ma, 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 ma. He was hit on the head Doink! and had passed out. Oh no. John's lifelong passion was robots. He had a generous sponsor. John's sponsor wanted to give something to all robots. Free will. Oh, okay. This, I don't like where this is going. Oh, it's scary. John was very against the idea because John understands AI very well. Yeah, he knows it's a bad idea. And that's why he was locked up. He had to escape. He had to warn the world. Oh no, I'm scared. A robot rebellion was about to happen. The locked lab has three doors. He can't touch door handles. Why? Why? The first handle has an electric current. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Second handle is made of hot iron. Ooh. Bye-bye <laughs> <by> hand. hand. <laughs> <laughs> and the third is covered with deadly poison. Which door should he choose? Uh, well, he has gloves on. I, I think the poison should be fine. Well, maybe the rubber gloves. I'm taking the electricity. Oh, true. I think you smucked. Oh, no, you win. The third door, John has gloves on. What kind of gloves? The poison won't hurt him. How do we know that? Because they're, they're lab gloves. They protect it from corrosive materials. <laughs> oh, true, true, true. John got out of the lab, but it was too late. There were robots in the street. And they angry, their eyes are red. Attacking people. Oh, this lady's about to get it. John knew how to shut down the robots. Well then do it. He could save the world. Well then do it. But he needed help. He called his sister, Monica. Monica hadn't noticed it yet. She was sitting at home, you know, texting, Candy Crush, texting a few guys. She likes to call those guys her pile. <laughs> Three men, Oliver, Jack, and Kurt, had asked her out. Wait, is this the same riddle? Yeah. The world is about to get torn apart by robots and Monica is texting her three boyfriends, Oliver. Hi, uh, I booked a table for two of my favorite restaurants. You're gonna love it, honey. Pick you up at six. If the world's still there at six. <laughs> Yo, Jack, sup, hello. How about a movie and some dinner afterwards? I can pick you up at seven if you want. <laughs> Hey, I, I, I'm a Kurt. I have, I have a huge movie collection at home. Uh, 
come see it. Movie? Okay, this Kurt guy's trying to Netflix and chill. I don't like Kurt. <laughs> he sounds like he's been in a few skirts. Hey, he wants to put minimal effort in <laughs> and get the max reward. Yeah, you know what? This guy booked ahead. I'm going with Oliver. Yeah, yeah. Oliver didn't ask if she even wanted to go to a restaurant. What a jerk. Okay, Oliver's out. He's rude and he's bossy. Get him out of here. Okay, okay. We didn't catch that. I personally liked him, but whatever. <laughs> Monica doesn't even know Kurtz. It's too dangerous to go to his place. Exactly. He's not gonna defend us from robots. No, oh, Jack seems nice. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Monica was about to text Jack. Suddenly, her brother kicked the door down and busted into the apartment. John told Monica everything. Yo, stop texting the boys, all right? We got a crazy apocalypse going on. Did she panic? No, she just kept looking at her phone. Jack was furious. He took her phone and called his friend Jeffrey. He was a cop. We can depend on Jeffrey actually, and he agreed to help. Okay, sweet, we like Jeffrey. John and Monica had to meet up with Jeffrey as fast as possible. Monica's car was on the street. Oh geez, there were robots everywhere. Oh, they're running. They had to run for it even though they had no weapons. There are three ways out of the house. Why? Wait. Thankfully Jack here has already done three doors today, so he'll know. First door opens to the street but there's a robot behind it. Why do you have three doors leading outside? This is so unnecessary. Beside each other. Yeah, come on. Who lives here? Behind the second door is a small dark room. Well, this is where Monica likes to put her three guys and then choose what door to go into. Oh yeah, there's a closet here. No other exits. And behind the third door is a huge trap. What door should John and Monica choose? I think that instead of like choosing a door, John needs to talk to Monica about how she treats her boyfriends. This is the real problem. The robots can wait. <laughs> I mean, all we can do is just go in here, I guess. Yeah. Step one, open the third door. Step two, open the first door. Oh, and then make the robot go in the trap? They can hide behind the second door. Oh. oh. All right, the robot will come in and go to the third door. It'll fall into the trap. Monica's just thinking ahead. She's very paranoid. She's playing some underwater 3D chess that I wouldn't understand. The holidays are here! Woo! Nigel, Tom, Stuart, Jeff, and Kaylee were super happy. The first day started out great. Look at us hanging out behind a rock. Whoa! The guys saw a UFO land in the city. Whoa! Aliens got out and started turning into people. Jeff ran to warn his parents. Oh, I gotta tell my mom and dad! But he fell and hurt his arm bad. Oh, poor Jeff. He had to go to the hospital. Oh, Jeff, you really messed this one up. Two doctors rushed to see him. Your arm is broken. Come into the next room and I'll put you in a cast. Eh, it's just a sprain, actually. You're freaking out, Mr. Colleague. We'll give you some painkillers and let you go home. All right, Jeff looked at the doctors. He suddenly realized one of them wasn't a doctor. Look at his mouth. Ah! It was an alien. Which doctor's fake? I don't know, they both look so legit to me. Yeah, I'll let them treat me any day. Oh, this guy's fake. The guy on the right, because he's holding a picture of a foot and this guy broke his arm. Oh! The second doctor. He's an alien! Jeff hurt his arm. The doctor has a snapshot of his leg. Well, it's his foot technically, but. Yeah, and also he asked him to come see him in a different room. I wonder what he wanted to do with him. Ooh, ooh. I've heard what aliens do to people. Spaceships, wouldn't want that. The guys quickly ran out of the ER. The hospital PA system came on. Aliens on the mic! We're gonna take all of you to a big red planet without rings. Without rings? Then there was something static, so they didn't hear the exact name of the planet. Uh, Mars? Oh, yeah. They knew there were numbers in the name. Tom wanted to Google the aliens' weaknesses. <laughs> yeah, that's readily available on, on Google. They found a list of planets that had life on them. What planet? Do the aliens come from? All right, so it's red without a ring, so it's RK98. Or a strange one. The Google Home app. What? Did you hear that? Google thought we said something. Oh my goodness. The robots are coming for us. And they're coming for us. <laughs> or strange one. They said numbers plural, so I'm going with arcade. Oh, okay, okay. Let's do that. Also, like planets with like these weird lines. Doesn't that mean like this, there's like some dank storms? Yep. <laughs> planets with rings are out. Ooh, this one's made of cheese. I like conundrum. Delicious. Big red planet, no rings. The aliens came from this planet. You were right. We been new. The guys found out something interesting though. The aliens were afraid of fire. They needed to shop for a flamethrower. Call up Elon Musk. Elon Musk, yeah, I was just about to say that. <laughs> the guys called a taxi to the nearest flamethrower store. 
But something went wrong and three cars pulled up. Oh no. Which one of these guys is gonna be an alien? The guy in the middle looks suspicious. His neck is awfully long and he's kind of wobbly. This guy's got extra eyes. Oh, oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'm going with this guy. He looks normal. The guy on the right. A guy on the right, yeah. Yeah. Aliens! Aliens! Oh! Oh, I missed the hand! Oh no, we about to get probed. I'm so sorry, long neck. I shouldn't have judged you. <laughs> the city center was packed and they had to leave before the city was closed off. No time to buy a flamethrower. Keep going! They asked the driver to take them to the bus station. They called their parents and agreed to meet in the next city. Oh, it's cute they're bringing their parents with them. Yeah, you gotta save everybody. The city was in a state of emergency. They get to the bus station. Everything was sold out. Oh. They decided to hide in the forest from the aliens. Like that's gonna go well, guys. They had no clue what they were doing. They got lost. It was getting dark. Where could they sleep? Uh, with me? <laughs> Just kidding. Cast. <laughs> okay, the edge of the forest or the spruce forest? Where would you go? Uh, I don't know. So maybe they'll have better cover in the spruce forest? Yeah, I agree. These are animal tracks. Maybe a dangerous animal. Well, I'm more scared of the aliens than I am of a wolf right now. Spruce trees retain heat. They can build a hut under a spruce. This isn't the end of the story. Well, thanks for letting us know. <laughs> Something much more serious is about to happen. Yo, keep your arms off. The five friends will have to save the city from aliens. Will you help them? Comments. No, we're not helping them. No, we're out of here. Mrs. Stanley lived in a big house outside the city. Hi, everyone. She was very fond of antiques. She loved collecting old expensive garbage, and she often went to auctions to buy them. Her whole house was full of valuable things. One day, her grandson Mark came to visit her. She went to the kitchen to bake cookies because she's such a good grandmother. And Mark was hanging out in the living room. Suddenly, Mrs. Stanley heard a crowd. Oh, Mark, what did you do this time? Oh no. She rushed to the hallway and saw her beloved vase in pieces on the floor. She was very upset. She couldn't stop crying. So Mark decided to track down who broke the vase, or vase, however you pronounce it. Looking closely, he saw wet tracks leading out Outside. Oh, it must have been an animal. He ran out of the house and saw a derg. A doggy. Mark asked around about whose dog it was, but nobody confessed. Help Mark find the owner of the dog. So this guy's got a dog shirt. This guy's got a leash. Uh, yeah. Person in the middle, I don't know. They're trying to trick us with the dog shirt. That's not even the picture of his dog. Okay, good, fair point. It's gotta be leash man. Right, like you wouldn't have a leash if you didn't have a dog. Yeah, and you can't take dogs to the grocery store, so it's not the person in the middle. Well, I mean, not necessarily true. I see parents with leashes all the time, like with their kids. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> He's the owner of the naughty dog, this guy. The art classes take place in the prison each Monday. They get to draw fruits and veggies. <laughs> Eggplant dude is my dude. <laughs> the prisoners are escorted all the way to the art studio and back. Hurry up, guys. <laughs> They're always searched after each class. Gotta make sure they don't get out with no paint or paintbrushes. They're only allowed to have their own art supplies. No scissors! One of the prisoners is going to escape. How can he do this? How has he? Uh, I don't know. I don't know either. They just got pencils and crayons and stuff. Yeah, maybe they can pick up the lock somehow with the pencil. Oh. The guy in the top right's got like a weird hanger looking thing. Ooh, yeah. Maybe it's Hanger Man. I'm gonna go with Hanger Man. Hanger Man. Yes! He looks like he's up to something too. He does. What's he gonna do? Green paint. Okay, he's making green water. Dip in a shirt. Look to like a guard, maybe? Yeah. <gasps> oh! What a guy! He's a genius. Absolute gigantic brain. Genius. A married couple were kidnapped by a maniac. Not a maniac. Each of you must choose how your partner should die. No, what? That is messed up. Do not repeat. Oh no, to be eaten by cannibals? No thank you. I don't feel like being a pot of soup today. To be left in a cave without water and food? Oh, yeah, no, that's not bad. I can't even go an hour without food. What do they think of me? What about being stomped on by a mammoth, Azzy? Ever thought about that? Or to be thrown into the ocean with some gators. Can gators even survive in the ocean? They cannot. We're going for the gators. Wait, do mammoths even exist? I'm going with the mammoth. I mean, do cannibals exist? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, oh. 
<laughs> Mammoths have died out long ago. We're gonna go in the mammoth door. We got this. Alligators live in freshwater. Okay, we were both right. Nailed it. Oh, so there's two options. Yeah, we picked both. One for you, one for me. Are you taking the mammoth or the crocodile? I, I, I'm, I'll let you pick first, because I'm a gentle woman. I'm definitely not picking the crocodiles, so it's gonna have to be you. Okay, deal. Aren't you scared of open water? A little bit, but like, I can handle it. I know I am. <laughs> Well, Lazzy, that was a good old time. It was a good old time with some good old laughs, and we should go to your channel and have some more. Yes, great old times were had. So much fun. Let's go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit push notifications, and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.